Section 2.1, the tangent and velocity problems, objective 1, which is to understand that the tangent line can be viewed as a limit of secant lines. So before we get to that objective, I want to remind you um, of your old knowledge that you've learned in geometry. In your geometry course, you were taught secant lines and tangent lines in the context of circles. So here you can see that we have a tangent line, and you were taught to identify it because it touched the curve at one point, and then we had a secant line which touched the curve at two points. Now the problem with those old definitions from geometry is that when we change the curve, and it's no longer a closed geometric shape, when we start dealing with polynomials types of functions or any function where the domain is all reals, you can have tangent lines that still have that same behavior near the point of tangency, but that also might intersect the curve more than one time. So instead of talking about the number of intersections, we have to talk about the behavior of the tangent line and the curve at that point of tangency. So just like our old definition of secant line was, you had to connect two points. Well, that's the same thing here for the vocabulary of a secant line in the calculus world. We pick any two points that we want on the curve and we connect them, and that will create a tan or excuse me a secant line. Where it gets a little strange is when we get to the tangent line, because the tangent line says we need it to be a limit of secant lines which contain the same endpoint. Well, what does that mean? To help illustrate that concept, I want to look at this module and deal with the fact that we have two points. So we're going to let our point P have an x-coordinate of 2, and then on this parabola we're going to choose another point Q that has its x-coordinate at 5. Now what we're going to do is we're going to connect these two points so that we create a secant line, and then we're going to drag this point Q along the yellow curve until it collides with P. And I want you to watch what happens to the secant lines as we drag that Q along the curve. Notice that when they collide, we have now created this tangent line that has that same behavior that we saw in geometry, only now we're dealing with a non-closed curve. For example, we can also illustrate it by going to the left instead of to the right. We don't necessarily have to nail down the point on the right. We could do it on the left as well and then we can still connect the two to create a secant line and let Q move along the curve until it collides with P. As soon as it hits P, we again will have that tangent line. Now this process will work no matter what the function is. So we could do a trig function, set our P, set our Q, and connect our secant lines and then drag Q along the curve, and we will see that we eventually, when Q collides with P, we eventually have a tangent line. And this works regardless of the curve, so that's always a nice benefit to have. So, hopefully that's enough for you to know what is going to be um, visually a tangent line and what will visually be a secant line. So I'd like you to try this notes web exam problem number one. Do it in your notes for right now. I don't want you doing it online until we've done all the notes web exam problems for the section. And when you're done with this one on your paper, explain in your own words the difference between a secant line and a tangent line in the calculus world.